Hey, what's going on guys? It's Vosik here bringing you my second survival guide. This one is for Gears of War 3. Hopefully I will bring something new to the table that you haven't thought of or just didn't know about. Uh, we're going to piece it up into certain sections here, so sit back and enjoy it. Alright, to start out with a little bit of basics here, if you move around the map and you hold the trigger down a lot, you see the effect called Bloom, which is what opens the reticule up. You have to learn to bu uh, burst fire at a distance so that you increase your accuracy and don't miss any of those important shots. Now in the event that you miss a lot of these shots, there's an ability that's absolutely crucial that you must master. It's called the act of reload, which is when you've reloaded your weapon or your bullets have expired out of your gun, a bar will appear underneath the ammunition box giving you three options to reload your weapon. Normal, active, and if you miss it, you will jam your gun. If you successfully actively reload your weapon, the amount of bullets that you have done so will blink in the ammo descriptions box. This ability will last about 8 seconds and your gun will be louder and the bullets will do extra damage. If you've noticed, the muzzle flash will di appear differently once it has expired, but be careful if you miss this active reload, your gun will jam. If you've successfully actively reloaded your weapon and you switch weapons by mistake, you still have the opportunity to use those active reloaded weapons. Now, once you switch back, the bullets will no longer blink, but if you fire the weapon, you'll notice the muzzle flash is still stronger, and so is the bullets themselves. So don't fret if you accidentally switch your weapon. Just switch back immediately and begin firing again, and your weapon will still be active reloaded. Another ability at the player's disposal is roadie running or sprinting. You can do so to get where you need to go faster by holding down A, but you have to be careful not to run in a straight line because you are vulnerable at that point. So make sure that you stay behind cover and use the wall bounce by tapping A to get where you need to go faster and more secure. Also during the roadie run you can tap A to quickly dive and get behind stuff quicker. Now a little bit more advanced during the roadie run is if you dive and re-hold the A button back down in the direction of which you which you got to go, he will quickly make that change without your camera having to pan around slowly, which makes it much more difficult for you to hit and probably frustrate your opponent. Another technique for moving around the map fast it's wall bouncing. Now not only is it good for this, but you can also defeat an opponent quickly by confusing them. Your character, when close enough to a wall or an obstruction, will laterally move sideways and forward and diagonally. But keep in mind, he will not do this backwards when he will only dive. So when you're running around, if you get close enough to an obstruction, if you tap the A, he will quickly slide toward it. Like any technique, you can master this. Now, in situations where you're one on two or even greater, you can quickly outmaneuver your opponents and use this advantage of your map knowledge to get around them quickly to destroy them. Unfortunately, you have to be careful because sometimes you will obstruct yourself and not even know it. A lot of mistakes that people make are they try to use the shotgun the entire fight. Now, this is a close range weapon and should only be used to do so. However, if you have to do this and you switch from long range, medium range, or even to short range fastly, if you switch the weapon right before you dive, you can switch the weapon mid-dive, allowing you to keep your momentum and pull out your shotgun. During this time, in which you can continue the fight without having to wait on your weapon to switch. In the event that you do get in a close quarter combat fight with the shotgun, you can use it effectively in many different ways. In this way, we're just shooting it from the hip. Now, it's a lot less accurate, and more than likely, you won't win the battle at long distance. But up close, and even with the sawed-off shotgun, it can be extremely effective. Now, you have to be very careful once you start to aim down the sight, because they, each level of uh, zoom has its own sensitivity, which, for an example, you have the look, the target, and the zoom sensitivity. Now, each of those must be configured, and me, I personally like to play on, on the same level so that I'm used to each individual one. So customize each individual one for yourself so that you're comfortable with it. Now, at a distance or at a rushing target, it's okay to stay aimed down sight for long periods of time, but it becomes ineffective if the target is not advancing toward you. So once you get closer, you will have to change your strategy of aim down sight, as in this case, it becomes extremely slow and must be adapted. Which also brings us to the snap technique. If I stay aimed down sight, my character begins to turn slow, but once I let go of the zoom trigger and reposition myself back in on aim down sight, I can move a lot faster. Now in this clip here, you'll notice that my character shoots, repositions the center of his screen onto the target, and resumes back to down sight, so that I can literally, as opposed to snap, back onto the target. This is really effective in uh, close quarter combat, and somewhat effective in medium. It should only be used when necessary, because sometimes you will continually spin yourself until you've actually missed your target. Two other effective tools in the close quarter combat's arsenal is the close quarter melee. Or in this case, if you have the uh, Lancer equipped, you would use the chainsaw. 
Now this is effective because they don't expect it, and sometimes just the sound themselves can scare them out of hiding. But you have to be very careful because if you get hit while revving the chainsaw up, it can literally stop you in your tracks, giving them enough time to fire into you and bringing you down. The second portion of the melee system is any other weapon aside from the chainsaw or the lancer. You have to be careful when you're meleeing though because each weapon has its own weight distribution so to speak. Like for an example in this clip here, the pistol requires three melees in order to bring a fresh opponent down. However, if you're using a shotgun or a retro lancer so to speak or maybe even a sniper rifle, uh, it would only take th uh, two to bring them down whereas opposed to pistol or bolt talk or something like that that was light would require three. So be careful of what you're using when you get in that situation and hopefully you won't have to get that close. Now on to the last portion of this guide is how to be a great teammate. Now I will trade a great player any day of the week for a good teammate, which means you cannot beat chemistry and communication. Unfortunately, Gears of War doesn't offer a kill streak system for UAVs and Blackbirds and things of that nature, so you have to communicate well. The in-game system offers an ADS spot, which means that any one of your four items can be zoomed in on a character, and you can click the left thumbstick in, allowing your teammates to see where that character is at all times. Now, this only lasts for a short period of time, so utilize it every few seconds. Now, if a teammate kills this person, you get experience points for it, so not only are you helping them, but you're helping yourself. Alright guys, that is going to conclude Vostik's basic survival guide of Gears of War 3. I hope that I taught you a few things, or maybe just reminded you of some techniques that you may have forgotten along the way. Please stay tuned for more helpful videos, and please feel free to leave feedback below or at some of the social networks listed in the descriptions box. As always, this is Vostik, and I cannot wait to meet you on the battlefield.